okay, so moving on, I want to hear a little bit more about the story because I know you guys at one time were one of the biggest Salesforce service providers. And then how did you go from that to Hubble? Give me the story, the history there. Sure. Yeah, I was part of a company called Traction on Demand. They were a Salesforce partner, both for services and building products. And they actually got acquired by Salesforce's professional services team. But they were interested in the talent. They wanted to beef up their professional services team, grow that team. So all of the technical intellectual property was not part of that acquisition. We spun that out into a separate company. And one of those pieces of IP was a predecessor of Hubble Diagnostics. We were using this attraction on demand because these challenges we were talking about, think about it from a partner's point of view. They are walking into a customer that might have a solution already. And when the partner is creating their SOW, their statement of work, their estimates, if they're assuming a really clean new org, there's one estimate. But if it's Mm -hmm. a really complex beast, I should probably add some extra steps to that statement of work. Right. And that awareness and that understanding really helps to make sure that you are aligned with your customers. So we were using this in our pre-sales process to identify risks and topics to talk about with our customers. And um, we were also using it in our managed services where you, know, you want to be proactive about keeping the health of your org up to snuff. And right. so that all worked really well in that situation. And then when we spun this out, we said, wait a minute. It's not just traction that could get value from this. Why not bring this to all Salesforce customers so they can keep their orgs healthy along the way? Let me recap on what you just said. So you guys had a big service company, as you were explaining, and this was a need. Like You need to be able to understand the org that you're going to work in. You need to be able to understand it in order to even provide a good scope of work for some work that may need to be done. Because the example we were talking about earlier, if you think you could just drop a swimming pool in, but you don't know there's electrical lines under there, then for one, your bid is going to be wrong. But then two, you're going to accidentally cut the power out. So this was a need for your company. But ultimately, you at some point determined that this could be valuable to the entire ecosystem and you guys could offer it to the ecosystem and provide this kind of value and this insight into the org to the rest of us. That's right. Is that about right? You got it. And I think Salesforce customers, there's not always just one like business stakeholder that knows everything that's going on in this org. And so another challenge is you might have a piece of the puzzle in one person's mind, another person's mind, you keep having to talk to all these people and you can piece it together. But some of that's just based on memory. There's a, not mm-hmm. a great documentation about this too. So back to the electrical lines being cut type of situation. Yeah. I think it was over here. Actually, we had some turnover and our admin left a couple of years yep. ago. We got a new one. And so it's just hard to piece it all together. This is where technology can always help. And okay, let's just do this objectively and really quickly through automation. Awesome. I know you guys collect, like you see a ton of orgs. Not just your own org, not just one or two clients' orgs, but you've had the opportunity to do diagnostics and see the schematics and under the hood of a lot of different orgs. So are you utilizing that and leveraging all of that information to provide a bigger picture? Tell me about that. Yeah. And that's, I think, another area that's really important because a lot of the times as a company, you are really familiar with how you've used Salesforce. But wouldn't it be great to understand how everybody's used Salesforce to figure out what some of those best practices are and where those patterns are? So our step one of being able to scan all these orgs, we can actually take that and in aggregate, of course, we share nothing specifically, but in an aggregate, we can help customers understand through objective data, what are other folks doing Mm. in their orgs? Are you more complex than Mm. them or are you less? And is that appropriate for your business model? And just trying to use that objective information to make better business decisions. Gotcha. Our second step is based on that to actually help you decide how to remediate some of those challenges. What if we found kind of complexity or some security issues in your org? We can actually guide the ecosystem based on some of that data to say, here's what other folks have, similar problems. Here's how you can solve those and empower customers to do that. Customers don't have that skill set internally. That's totally fine. And that's really work with a great partner like you guys at Banjax. Yeah. And Appreciate that's that. okay too. You figure out what makes sense for your own organization. But the real ultimate goal of where we're going with this is predictive intelligence, using machine learning. So basically, what if 
I said, everybody in the automotive industry uses Salesforce this way. The ones that are actually successful in growing their businesses. And we could take that pattern and help a customer make decisions on what should I do next? Mm. Should I go install this package? Am I not like fully utilizing service cloud the way that I hope to? How can we help guide them based on what we're seeing out there? And that's where this gets really exciting. Yeah, that is exciting. I was just thinking about, as you were talking, why you might want or need to see the patterns of the way other people are doing things. And oftentimes it's like the strengths of a product that create its vulnerabilities. We have the ability to have this meeting over Zoom, but the weakness is we have to deal with a little audio issues, right? If the technology messes up. So I think one of the problems you're solving actually comes from the strength of Salesforce empowering creativity. And what you have is organizations where people have solved problems sometimes in very unique ways, right? So sometimes you'll go into an org and maybe they've solved problems in the past, but it doesn't meet the patterns of other industry standards. And if you want to build on that, it is very helpful to understand what other orgs that have solved these same problems have done before. Yeah. And you hit it though. We're at a super exciting time because before a lot of these were custom solutions that had to be built. And it's mm -hmm. very hard to compare custom solutions, the old application servers and web servers of the past, but Salesforce right. has a template. Here's how to run your sales process. Here's how to run service. So there are very standard solutions that hundreds and thousands of customers are using. And so it's right. easy now to compare across them. And then with the custom solutions and the power of AI machine learning, even if you did name things a little bit differently, we can actually see there's some patterns here. Yep. Yeah. You, you try to build something that actually is a standard product. Maybe we suggest you try that out instead because you get the advantage of the innovation getting pumped into it from Salesforce's behemoth R&D budget instead of yeah. you build that yourself. So it's really interesting.